Hi, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Barnes Takeout. I'm Bill Perthes, the Bernard C. Watson Director of Adult Education at the Barnes Foundation, and Barnes Takeout is your daily dose of art. We're like you, working from home and missing both our colleagues as well as our collection and using this as an opportunity to focus on works that we find uh, of particular in interest in our collection and saying something about that and sharing those, uh, those observations with you. The work that I've chosen today is by the American artist Horace Pippin and it's called Supper Time and you'll see it here. It was created in 1940, around 1940. Uh, first, a little bit about Horace Pippin, uh, an African-American artist born in Westchester, Pennsylvania, just a little more than 23 miles west of Philadelphia. So he was a, a local artist for us. Um, as, as a child, his family moved to Goshen, New York, where he spent most of his childhood. He enlisted in the First World War in uh, 1917, and in 1918 was was injured. Uh, he was part of the 15th Division of the Na uh, New York National Guard that saw some pretty horrific fighting um, in the First World War, a uh, war uh, very much dominated by trench warfare. Um, so Pippin was injured. He, uh, he was uh, injured in his right shoulder. Um, he was honorably discharged in 1919 and in 1920 married and moved back to Westchester and um, began creating uh, works of art. Um, so this, this uh, picture demonstrates a couple things that are uh, notable about Pippin's work. First is the subject matter. Um, these, these sort of interior domestic uh, scenes were ones where he was drawing on his childhood memories um, of his of his family and friends, and um, and so here in this image we see over to the to the right um, a stove, so a wood or coal burning stove. Um, wonderful little detail of a frying pan, a sputtering frying pan on that stove, which gives us the, the clear indication that that stove is hot. Uh, the window, where you'll see that there's snow or frost gathered on the mullions. Again, a detail that tells us that it's cold outside. Uh, if you've spent any time in um, a cabin with a wood or coal burning stove, it often gets very hot. And so another wonderful detail that I like about this picture is this open door. So the door uh, letting in some of that cold outside air to try to moderate the temperature inside. Um, uh, clothes hanging on the line, again, an indication that it's cold outside and warm inside. And then the figures, I'll say a little bit more about them in a, in a moment, gathered around a table and much like the sputtering frying pan, very specific details, such as the coffee pot, and you'll see that there's steam rising from its spout. Um, here, what I'm reading is a glass of milk, um, a cup and a saucer. Some details are a little more difficult to discern, so this might be a, a sugar bowl or maybe a, a cake or something, and it's not it maybe another um, coffee mug or something that the woman is holding. Um, the figures gathered around the table and identified with very specific use of color. So this really brilliant, uh, bold blue. Um, another detail that Pippin adds is the change in color here that suggests perhaps some perspiration, again, giving us the idea that this is a, a, a that it's hot inside. Um, Complementing this blue is this nice pink area on the, the shirt of the man. So these complementary, co complementary colors on either side, the blue to the pink, and then his use of white. So even though the palette is fairly simple, um, he's using it very effectively. Um, the, with the 
areas of white, whether it's the apron or the head, uh, the headdress, the white of the child or of the, the laundry on the line, uh, drawing our eye through, through the composition. Um, he positions the figures on either side of the table so that the, the open door and the steaming uh, coffee pot are, are obvious. Uh, and the, those bold areas of the blue and the pink really draw our eye back and forth across the, across the composition. Before I go any further, I want to show you where the picture is in the, in the Barnes Foundation. So we're in Gallery 12 and we're facing east. And you'll see here's our picture. And it's one of three pictures by Pippin in this gallery, three of four works by Pippin in the in the collection. And uh, actually, you'll see that it's surrounded by works uh, by, this is a work by Maurice Prendergast, Jules Pascan, and uh, Ernst Lawson, um, American artists. And that's the theme of this of this gallery, of Gallery 12. It's dedicated entirely to American artists. Uh, so Maurice Prendergast here, and this frame, this frame, and the frame on our picture are frames created by Maurice Prendergast's brother, Charles Prendergast. So uh, a unique quality about it that Barnes chose to put it in a Maurice uh, Charles Prendergast frame. Um, I like this gallery view because in the raking light, the light coming down from above, we get an even better sense of the texture of this, uh, this image. And now that we've had some time to look at it, you may have noticed the, one of the other things that makes this image unique. I mentioned uh, Pippin's interest in um, scenes drawn from his childhood memories. Uh, so this domestic uh, interior scene, but also in this raking light, you get a much better sense of the texture of the picture. It has a rugged texture to it. And you may have noticed that areas like this and this are a grain of wood. This picture is not painted on canvas, but rather on a piece of repurpose, actually several pieces of uh, repurposed wood that were bound together, fastened together, and that uh, Pippin is, has used, if we go back to that gallery view, has used a very uh, unique technique to create the boundaries of many of these color areas. And you get a sense of this here, the, where you see the ridges. What he's done is he's used a, a hot poker to actually burn lines into the into the panel, so um, he held the hot poker that he heated up in uh, the stove in his home, and then supporting it with his right hand, again the hand that was injured, he pressed the panel against that hot poker, holding it in his left hand and maneuvering it around to burn and these in, to burn these incised lines into. The panel. Um, the other thing that he's done is he's left this wood grain exposed and he's used it in uh, some ways that are perhaps more more obvious, like the grain of the table. That seems like a, a pretty reasonable choice. And we get a sense of that with the chair as well, how he's left some of the wood grain so that it clearly indicates that the material of the chair is is wood, but then he's also done that for the landscape that we see outside the window, that he's left the wood graining for there. Rather than painting an exterior, he leaves this grain exposed, as well as using it for the flesh tone. So in the, the figures, the flesh tone is the wood grain, again, the wood grain itself. And here he's burned a couple details of eyes and nose and mouth. Um, and if you think about the, the the effort it takes to, particularly if 
you know, he didn't have full use of his right hand to choose to create the image in this way. It's a very laborious way um, of, of creating that it really speaks to uh, one of the things that so many people appreciated and continue to appreciate about the work of Horace Pippin. And that is that he's really speaking with a, a personal um, and a forceful expressive voice that he's not trying to copy anybody else, but he's doing and creating these images um, in a very personal way. Um, there's it's a very direct, uh, very direct uh, kind of visual uh, voice. Um, it's at the time what uh, would have been identified as a kind of primitive and a primitive manner, and that was not certainly as Barnes used it, a negative, but rather that he wasn't, again, he wasn't trying to copy anybody. He was he was trying to be genuine to his own intentions, but also in particular using the wood grain that this speaks to a very modernist intention, allowing the materiality of the medium to be obvious to the viewer. So leaving this, this exposed wood grain very much taps into uh, a modernist sensibility. So these are just two things that certainly would have interest Barnes as well as many of Pippin's contemporaries that he was sort of navigating between um, this sort of primitive, unique, singular voice of his own, but also very much um, tapping into modernists' intentions. So I hope the next time you come to the Barnes Foundation, you visit Gallery 12 and come and see Pippin's Supper Time, uh, again, created in 1940. And uh, I hope uh, that you're doing well and that you join us again for the future uh, editions of Barnes Takeout. Again, I'm Bill Perthes. Thanks for joining me. Mm -hmm.